Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video. And I want to welcome you to another episode. In this episode, we are going to spend some time talking about Vampirella. Why it's a good time to be a fan of Batman. And we'll also take a look at some next generation Marvel keys and so much more. Stay tuned. In this first blog post, the blogger takes a hard look at a really awesome book that has shot up 365 spots on the popular Silver Age list on Go Collect. And this book is from 1969. And I'm curious whether you know what this book might be. And if you don't, it's okay. I'm going to end the suspense and let you know that we are talking about Vampirella issue number one. And this is the first appearance of Vampirella. Now, this book has a lot going for it. A fantastic uh, character, but also some really awesome artists that did the cover art as well as the interior panels. The cover was done by the very talented Frank Frazetta and the interior panels were done by Neil Adams. And the blogger, for his part, is asking some questions as to whether this book is good for speculators. And they spend some time looking at three different books, three different price points, starting with a 9.4. And this book is currently selling for $7,200 with a return of about 22%. A 9.0 is currently selling for about $24.50 and has a positive return of 36.1%. A 7.0 will set you back around $800 and has a positive return of about 38.2%. Now, Vampirella has been around for a very long time. As I mentioned, this character debuted in 1969 and ran all the way continuously into the 80s and is currently being revitalized every few years by Dynamite. And again, there may be some magic here. And if you do believe that, you definitely want to check out this blog post and read the argument that is being made by the blogger and then judge for yourself. The link to this post down in the description. So here's the thing. If you are a fan of Marvel or DC, you are probably well aware of several crossover events between the two publishers over the last 80 some odd years. There have been a couple of official crossover events. But what you might not know is that there have actually been several unofficial crossovers as well. In this next blog post, the blogger takes a look at two such unofficial crossover events. And I'll be honest, I didn't know about either one of these, but I am now intrigued and I'm planning to check out these two books because I want to see if I'm seeing what the blogger is actually noticing. And you, you may want to do the same, but I would definitely encourage you to start with the blog post. The first crossover, the first unofficial crossover, I should say that the blogger talks about is Swamp Thing issue number 47. And of course, Swamp Thing is a DC character. In this story written by Alan Moore, we actually see Swamp Thing travel to Brazil, where he is attempting to learn a little bit more about his background, where he comes from, from John Constantine, as well as some natives in the Brazilian jungle. And as he is going through the jungle, we actually see Marvel's Man-Thing appear in a panel in this book. And essentially what Alan Moore is doing is saying that there is an ancestral relationship that exists between Man-Thing and Swamp Thing. And like I said, I am about to go find this book because I want to find this panel and I want to see it for myself. Uh, and I would definitely encourage you to check out the blog post and then check out the book as well. The blogger goes on to talk about a second unofficial crossover. This one appears in Quasar issue number 17. 
And with this book, there is actually several different references over the course of the book to Flash. And the reason for this is that there is a race where the fastest people in the Marvel Universe are brought together to compete in a race, basically. We're talking about Quicksilver, Monica Rambeau, The Wizard, and several other people. And as they begin to race, there is a figure that materializes, and it is none other than DC's Flash. And there's some quirky little wordplay that actually happens with this one that I find interesting. I only know about it because I read it in the blog post, but I am going to go read the book for myself because I'm honestly curious and I kind of sort of like Flash. So I definitely want to check this one out. The link to this blog post down in the description. And I want to give a huge shout out to the blogger for working on this one because I do like these crossover events. And so I am very much intrigued by this one. The blogger in this next post actually makes a pretty fantastic point. We all know that first appearances are like all the rage right now. And you can get all kinds of alerts and news reports and things like that on your phone anytime a new character appears or some speculative news actually comes out. But there is a book that came out recently that actually had some pretty interesting stuff happen in it, including the first appearance that I did not hear about at all. This one was literally under the radar, which is hard to do in this day and age because of everything that I just mentioned to you a second ago. So I definitely want to applaud the blogger for digging into this one and finding it and raising uh, our attention, right? And helping us to realize that there's something that we all may have missed. Well, Maybe it's just me. I don't know. You you guys tell me. But the blogger spends some time talking about why a recent issue of Catwoman is one that you may want to take a look at. And we are specifically talking about Catwoman issue number 23. Now, in this issue, not only do we see Catwoman don a new costume, but we also get the first appearance of a new sidekick named Catgirl. Now, what's interesting here is that this is not the first person to actually don the moniker of Catgirl. There was, about a decade ago, another character named Kitty Hawk that actually used the Catgirl moniker once before, but we have a new Catgirl. And so again, this is a character uh, that we don't know a whole lot about, much like, you know, Punchline and some other characters that have been recently introduced, but there may be a role for this character. We just have to see how things play out over time. So it's definitely going to be interesting. But here's the thing, not only was there the, the costume change and the first appearance of the sidekick, but there was a second appearance, kind of, sort of, of a character that made an appearance back in the day. Now, this character is actually a pretty controversial character, and it is a character that I have heard about. I just had not heard that he was back. The character that we're talking about is none other than Snow Flame. Now, if that name does not ring a bell, let me tell you why Snow Flame could be controversial. His superpower is that he basically creates flames after using a narcotic. Yeah, he uses a narcotic and creates flames. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Uh, I am honestly intrigued. I never saw this character's first appearance back in the day, but I, I want to check this Catwoman book out because there's some pretty interesting stuff that is happening here. And if this intrigues you, the link to this blog post down in the description. So as I alluded to in the intro, we are about to talk about some next generation Marvel keys. And I'm specifically talking about some next generation characters that have some keys that you may want to take a look at. A lot of people right now are really focused on your Kamala Khans and your Miles Morales. 
but there are some other characters that are out there that are somewhat associated with these two that you may also want to consider picking up because they also have a lot of potential. The very first character that the blogger talks about is none other than Riri Williams, known as Ironheart. And her first cameo appearance was Invincible Iron Man issue number seven. Her first full appearance was Invincible Iron Man number nine. And both of these books are somewhat hot books, but the great thing is that you can pick both of them up relatively inexpensively. Both of these books are hovering first prints somewhere around $60 to $70, which isn't all that bad. And if you think about it, not that they're going to do this because you really don't know, but Miles Morales, his first appearance was around $90 not that long ago. So again, Riri Williams might not be a bad bet. The next character that the blogger actually talks about is none other than Sam Alexander, AKA Nova. And he had his first appearance in Marvel Point One issue number one. And this was actually a one shot. And what's great about this book is that it's even less expensive than the aforementioned books. And you can pick this one up somewhere between 20 and $30. Now what's great in the case of all of these books that I just mentioned is that there's also some variants out there as well. And I'm not going to talk about those, but I will encourage you to check out the blog post because the blogger does a pretty good job of highlighting some of these books and the rationale for why you may want to pick up one versus the other, or potentially if you want to pick them all up, there is an argument to be had here. Check it out. So this next blog post is pretty awesome because it is actually talking about an anti-hero that wears the stars and stripes. Well, he kind of sort of wore the stars and stripes and then he, he mixed it up just a little bit. But the character that I'm talking about is the U.S. agent. And U.S. agent is starting to have a higher profile right now, partly because he is going to be appearing in an upcoming a Disney streaming service. So people are starting to pay attention to this character. And I think some of the books that are associated with this character are starting to heat up. But the other reason why I think people are paying attention is because there is, I think it's a one shot that's actually going to be coming out relatively soon featuring the U.S. agent. And I want to say this one drops in November. And I'm honestly excited to read this. I kind of sort of dig the U.S. agent back from the 90s. He was kind of around for, for a while there. And so I'm curious to see what they are going to do that that being Marvel, to see what they do with the character in the present day. The blogger in this article talks about three books associated with U.S. agent that you may want to pick up. I'm only going to mention one of them to you, and that book is Captain America issue number 354. Now, in this issue, this is where John Walker, who is basically the U.S. agent. This is where he dons his persona of the U.S. agent. And this book has an FMV right now of $280 for a 9.8. And if you decide that that's a little too much for what you want to spend from a speculator standpoint, there are a couple of other books that the blogger talks about that are less expensive that you can consider picking up. And again, we don't know whether there's going to be any magic made here with this character appearing in the streaming services, but you at least want to consider it. So as I mentioned in the intro, now is a good time to be a Batman fan. And the blogger in this next blog post does a really good job of explaining why that's true. And, and he, he basically makes the case because of the fact that there is some really good writing that is happening right now with Batman, but also because we are seeing the introduction of some pretty awesome characters, some, some villains that are setting their sights on Batman. And this includes characters like the very popular Punchline, and it also includes characters like Clown Hunter, the Underbroker, as well as the Designer. 
And in the upcoming issue number 102, we will actually be introduced to a new villain, the Ghost Maker. And I am a Batman fan. I will tell you that. I, I like a lot of the older Batman stuff. I have been reading a lot of the modern stuff, but I have heard nothing but positive things from people that are reading these runs. And so I definitely want to encourage you to check out this blog post, see what the blogger has to say about what is happening right now with Batman. The link to this blog post is down in the description. Check it out. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another recap video. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch and I wanna encourage you, if you enjoyed this video, to hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment down in the comment section. And I also want to encourage you to come back next week when we get to do this all over again.